Thank you, Jihei. That was some Korean violin playing here. And with that, we start this analysis. For we have Thomas here in blue going against Bertolon. And Bertolon wonder how can you counter felons if you're cloaky bots. And he starts here with cloaky bots and he's, uh, he's making some expansion with mixes. And he starts with an economic start here, as you can see. Um, and he's gonna follow up, up, up that with some glaives, so that's decent. While his opponent is starting with just bandits. Uh, yeah. So a tiny thing you can do is try to plan where your commander is gonna be and not place uh, solar collectors right beneath it, so it doesn't have to move. Now it's gonna have to move twice because it's moving on top of them. Those are small details, but you're losing a few seconds here where the commander is just walking a little bit. And you're gonna start with the radar here, I guess. You have quite amount, quite an amount of radar here, but starting with the radar is pretty safe. You're gonna be able to spot incoming units. Uh, yeah. And now your commander is idle, you should be moving, doing something with it. Like a commander is a strong unit, it can both build defenses and expand, while also having the f being able to kill a lot of raiders and defend itself. So it's basically one or two riots in combination with a builder, so yeah. Having it just standing still is not good. And you're being pretty defensive here, I guess you're not sure what these units are. And bandits, they kind of beat uh, glaives in a straight-up fight, if you're not microing well. Like, you could say that the bandits have the micro advantage and the glaives will have to close the distance somehow. And now you're finally starting your mexes, but your commander is still pretty, like, do you need another radar? I mean... You see this on with this radar already. So also, you haven't really scouted your enemy at this point, and I would suggest uh, having... Uh, like, you don't know what kind of unit it is, just sending a glaive with forward and back just to see what they are, so you know that they're bandits and not something heavier would have been nice. Uh, like, you probably want to out try to outnumber, like... Not exactly two glaives per bandit, but yeah, if you have two bandits per, gla per bandit, you're gonna do well. Uh, six against four, that's a decent sh choice as well. You can probably run these bandits down, but you're a bit spread out and you don't really manage to focus your fire. But you kill two and you lose four, uh, three, so yeah, it's about an even exchange. Uh, yeah. So now you have four, yeah, you can easily take this and lose one glaive and kill two bandits. Or lose like two bandits and kill two... Uh, yeah, you lose one ba one glaive and kill two bandits. And your commander is stationary again and doesn't do anything. And you kill another bandit without even losing a single glaive, so that's nice. This glaive is gonna regenerate of just five seconds and then just ten more seconds and it's gonna be at full health again. That's an advantage of bandits, they can go in and take a bit of damage and then retreat uh, and repair. So that's also a micro advantage that you can use, well not really a micro advantage, but you can use micro to like cycle glaives. And you're scouting out here and seeing that enemy has an expander here, yeah that's good. And finally you're gonna move out with your commander, but it has been idle a lot. So yeah. But you have your uh, construction construction bots on high priority and that's good. But still, your commander could have been here taking these mixes or... yeah. As you can see, the enemy is already out expanding you quite a bit. Um, so yeah, they're starting on their fifth mix here. So, yeah, you have a quite large raiding party here, and you ha don't have any intel on enemy. Um, so if you would send them forward now, you might be spot this position, and you can easily overrun this and just run close and kill this Lotus Turret. But I guess that gap is kind of close now that this outlaw is coming, coming here.
Yeah, and you're gonna do some ex slow expanding with uh, solar collectors at each max. That slows down your expansion quite a bit. Oh, and you're going in against a commander with like 10 glaives. It's close. But it looks like this outlaw is gonna save it. Like you might even have been able to dive the commander there and get it. Like the outlaw didn't slow them that fast. So yeah. You only got a thug there. That was a bit indecisive. Uh, you might have gotten the commander there with your glaives because the outlaw was out of position. So, but then you decided to go for the thug instead when you saw the outlaw. Hmm. Yeah, outlaw have been nerfed quite a bit, so they don't do full damage at range. So you can kind of like skirmish against them a bit if you don't go too close. Even like a lone outlaw is easily overrun by glaives. Uh, this position now, not that there's come bandits and there are defenses. Yeah, not a good, good place to attack. Yeah, if you have been paying attention, you could be raiding this position. You have this glaive here, like it could have been patrolling back and forth to prevent this convict from just building freely here. Uh, yeah. And you can easily run down a lotus turret with these glaives. Just losing one glaive there. So now this position is open for harassment and you take that opportunity. While you're also this glaive is gonna kill this convict over here. Meanwhile your commander is being attacked but this is not too difficult to deal with. Like your commander alone against these units would have been a problem but once you have this load of cert and some supporting glaives, yeah it's pretty safe. Yeah, so that's some good rating. But here you have an idle con again. It could be expanding and reclaiming here. So yeah. Uh, also you choose to go for a Stardust. Stardust is pretty good against thugs and outlaws. So yeah, that's decent. And you run in here with first with three glaives. Not doing any damage basically. Uh, and this is the first point you spot this felon. And you avoid it. That's good. This, this felon would just kill these glaives. But then you're s trying to kill the commander, that's a bit risky. Yeah, was a bit greedy there. Meanwhile, these, pos yeah, you have some defense turret and Ronins, yeah. You're gonna clean this up pretty well. Still, you're expanding really slowly with just these conjure. Like you could have had this conjure also expanding here. Meanwhile, these glaives are gonna try to harass some more. So yeah, building. I mean, you can build solar collectors next to Mexis, but it slows down your expansion and metal like metal production quite a lot. Like if we look at the metal produced, your enemy has been quite far ahead of you. And if we look at overdrive, yeah, you only have overdrived about the same, really. Like you haven't overdriven a lot. It would have been better just to build the Mexis first and then build solar collectors next to them. And you are advancing here with Rokos, uh, with Ronins, and they deal with defenses fairly well. Although they're wasting some shots against this Solar Collector. Oh, and the enemy has made three felons. That's a lot. Like, the thing with felons is that they're gonna drain themselves pretty quickly against defenses. On the other hand, you only have, like, pickets, so... Lotus turrets tends to drain felons more if you build Lotus turrets. Pickets aren't really gonna drain it much. So you finally took all your mixes, and you denied some mixes to your opponent, so that puts your head in expansion. But here comes the felons, and at this point, you need to concentrate your force against all these felon, basically. And these pickets aren't gonna do much to help you. Mm, yeah, basically you should have, like, 
seeing one felon and then a build up of thugs, that's really dangerous for your commander. Like your commander can take quite a, a lot of shots and then you, then you can have your army, army running after it's been damaged. But yeah, at this point your army is too small and you're too far forward. This is a big risk when you're playing cloaky bots against uh, against uh, shield bots is that you're overextending. And by overextending, uh, the enemy shield ball can make a bit of attrition and then keep pushing. Um, yeah. At this position, do you have enough uh, build power? And yeah, you have a lot of build power actually to push out the phantom and a phantoms counters felons pretty well it will only it will go through a shield as soon as it's down it's below like 1500 uh, uh, shield points then it will just go straight through and kill the felon so yeah at this point i wouldn't say i've lost but you yeah you're getting far behind in that sense but you're still you're still, but by being able to use your cloaky bot speed advantage, you can still keep raiding like you're doing here, and that's a good choice. Like, uh, that's basically what you have to do against the shield ball, is that you have to avoid it as much as possible, and then raid where the shield ball is not. Um, sadly, your, your commander is in a bad spot, so yeah. Like, it was cocked up here, uh, and yeah, it's, it has a hard time retreating. But yeah, raiding this is really good for you. So, um, against this massive shield ball, yeah, you can't really do with just uh, Ronins. You need something heavier. I would really recommend uh, uh, like a, a Phantom. Even slings are pretty decent at draining a shield ball if you just keep continuing to shoot at it. Uh, an also an alternative is to have imps. You can set a cloak field uh, on this, uh, you set a cloak field on a conjurer, and then you can use a few imps. Like you, s they create a cloak field, and since uh, Thomas has been greedy and he doesn't even have any, any what do you call it? He doesn't really have any uh, outlaws here, so you could easily just cloak, cloak a conjurer, stand it like here, and then s have an imp here. And then you send it in, and you can stall probably half the army. And then you can have a follow up of Ronins or uh, Glaives. Like you want something that can easily match the speed of a thug. So, yeah. And then you can kill most of the army. You can drain the last felons that you didn't get with the Imp, and then you can just uh, kill the rest of the army with your Glaives and Ronins. It's a pretty good tactic. Yeah, you're overextending a bit there. Hard to know when the. Felon is getting out, and here you have just one knight against pretty well felons. You're draining them a bit, but not enough. Like Ronins can drain, but he will also tend to take some losses when they're trying to drain the felons. Although you can like, if you're trying to use a felon for cost against Ronin, the felon is gonna die because it's gonna get drained and it keeps getting drained, even if he kills two or three Ronins. Yeah, but against this large of a a shield bot army when you're behind, yeah, it's hard to deal with with Ronins. W meanwhile, your Stinger didn't go up. I mean, Stinger is decent against a shield ball, but not that big of a shield ball, so it's tricky. Like be being able to get this expansion by building defense turrets up here, that would be a good thing. Yeah, and you're gonna opt for knights and slings. That's a decent counter if you're not this far behind. Like, if you're this far behind, I would recommend a Phantom or an Imp that is cloaked in the cloak field of a Conjurer. Um, because, yeah. Your army here is about 2000 value and this shield wall is about 3400. So, yeah, in order to deal with that shield ball, you would need some more... Uh, yeah, you would need an an equal army about it, to drain it with like knights and slings. And you're, yeah. You're finally gonna start on a phantom, but now that you lost so much economy, it's gonna be hard to get back into this. Uh,
Yeah, you can see how far ahead the value killed enemy has gotten here. At this point, the comeback is really hard. Like, you're gonna try to defend this position. Um, it can be tricky to make a Stardust shoot down. They have basically a limit on how much they can shoot down. Even though they're t it's technically um, in range of these units, it might be uh, like it might be obstructed by units, and it also has a limit on how easily it can shoot down. Yeah, but now with this smaller economy, it takes a really long time to get this phantom out. Looks like the enemy is going to go over a gunship switch. And your felon is finally going to be done. I mean, your phantom. But yeah, at this point, it's too late. Um, Thomas is going to go for a bombing like this, that's pretty effective, if there are no warriors here, or any stingers, or any, uh, like, yeah. A decent hit, yeah, good hit. Yeah, and this army is basically still untouched with some extra support of the bandits now and you have, yeah like an imp could potentially still turn this around like getting an imp stunning like two felons and yeah yeah, and you shot you shot when the felons were fully recharged so the shot didn't go through Looks like the enemy's gonna come for a little drop here. Kinda funny. Boom! And that's your base gone. Yeah, at this point it's pretty much over. Do you have even have energy to keep this phantom stunned? I mean, uh, keep it uh, cloaked? You're just walking by without shooting there. <laughs> yeah, doing this without an economy doesn't really work on sides, so yeah. And your phantom goes down because you lacked energy. But yeah, it's over. You have no mixes. Yeah, so basically you didn't get out eco that badly. Like you did some counter raiding in later and got back ahead. A thing you need to be consider is your army composition. Well, I mean, mostly the enemy's army composition. Like, there are several viable unit combination and strategies with a shield boss. They can go for, for example, the clay. I mean, bandits and the rogue spam. And with bandits and rogue spam, yeah, you're gonna be. 
yeah, they can do some pretty nasty timing pushes and such. But you can stay on Ronins and Glaives and uh, and uh, Slings against them. You don't really need that much other units. But if the enemy has like, you shouldn't, you should know. You have to scout and know if the enemy is building up a shield bot army or not. It needs you need to like deal with it. Like you made a lot of pickets here. Pickets are more expensive than lotus turrets. Uh, so for example, if you build, you were creeping forward with just pickets, and pickets they're decent, uh, but a lotus turret is even cheaper and has much more HP, which means a felon is gonna drain itself much more when it's trying to deal with a lotus turret. So if you have like lotus turret and it's uh, going towards the enemy, yeah, the uh, felons are gonna are gonna drain themselves against them. And rogues, on the other hand, they outrange Lotus turrets, so they're not really gonna take any damage from them. So you can argue that uh, pickets are better against uh, uh, rogues. But then again, you should be scouting and seeing, like you shouldn't let the enemy just surprise you with three felons, and you only stand there with three pickets, and they just keep pushing on. But even then, uh, Thomas was greedy, so. Um, you can always have a conjurer on the front line, so you can have red to have a cloak cloak field, and then you just send forward an imp or something, and then you can stun a large portion of his army with just one imp uh, this early in the game. So that's a like that's a mobile counter if you don't want to go for phantoms. But phantoms, yeah, you could have gone for phantoms and still push the enemy back. So yeah, that works decently. Um, and as I said, if you want, like, you shouldn't be cocked out in this position like this, with just pickets and not many units there. You should be either you should be prepared to go all in against uh, uh, the shield ball, or you should withdraw until you have enough units to completely drain it and overrun it, and try to avoid uh, the shield ball so you can raid this other position, which you did pretty well still, but you still got pretty. Uh, far ahead, far behind in that engagement, and all the way up to that. You can see the value kill here, yeah. Yeah, after that it started to go downhill for you. So yeah, taking some mixes faster as well, and building like energy on the high ground, and then making uh, solar collectors later to overdrive is also a suggestion to expand your economy faster. But yeah, good luck and have fun.